All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing. We truly appreciate it. We've got the latest update for the main branch for Tesla, which is 2023 12.1.1. And while there are a few features that are being included here, they're pretty big features in terms of the UI or the blending of the UI between the Model S, the new Model S and X and the Model 3 and Model Y, trying to unify the UI for the fleet and some of the features and functionality that they include. So let's jump into it really quickly. The first thing that you have here is control search, giving new users the ability to quickly search uh, throughout the uh, menu items, trying to find specific things instead of trying to click through the different menu items to try to figure out where things are, especially if they move from re release to release. This is a really cool feature, allows you to quickly search for it. Uh, the release notes read, use the search function for quicker access to controls and settings. When you go to controls and settings, search at the top of the screen, enter a search term at the top of the screen to be able to find where that particular content lives. So if you can go in here, you go to menu, and you have the search, which is the new icon. That's another sort of undocumented feature where they have the new uh, delineator and label to show you what's new in the menu items as you continue to look through the, the interface. So if you don't wanna read the release notes, you just wanna sort of dive through the menus, you now see this new icon to tell you what's new. So you can come in here, go to search, and you can say, I don't know, um, sentry mode and it'll bring up those features. Now it doesn't bring you to the menu item itself, it brings up just those specific features, which is pretty cool. So you could say drag strip, right? So drag strip, and it brings those features there. So that's really, really cool because it doesn't just show you where it is, it brings up the actual controls. Um, so you can actually manipulate them. Lights, so you want it to be a light dark appearance for the dark or light screen, brightness, headlights, etc right then and there. So that's pretty, pretty awesome for Tesla to include that pretty, pretty cool feature to have uh, for, for search, okay? The next thing we have here is points of interest. Um, see photos and reviews when you select a point of interest or a supercharger location, which is pretty cool. Now, before everything was pretty monochrome for the most part with a little bit of splash of color here and there on the screen, but specifically for details around supercharging, um, it was always pretty sparse in terms of the details that it would show you because, right, you want to be able to see is some place open or closed. You want to see what reviews they got to see if it's a good place to go. And you also may want to see some photos of some food or the location itself to be able to give you some more insight. This is really, really cool because it's modernizing the Tesla interface and the UI and giving it some, some parity with some of the highly requested features like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. All right, so being able to go here, select a supercharger, and this is another undocumented feature when you, the, the navigation menu has been revamped and you're also gonna be able to see the distance from your location, sort of highlight it right here in a different format so that you can actually click on one and see the details, right? So I can see the details of the supercharger um, in this particular instance, in this particular instance, um, it's not allowing me to make it larger if I move the music over here, you can start to see a little bit. Here we go. It looks a little bit better. Okay, so I can see photos. Uh, I can't click on them, but you can see photos and other amenities. If you want to see restaurants nearby, you can click on that. It'll search for different restaurants. And if you have like Chipotle or something, you can click here. And then you can go here and see it got one star. <laughs> Worst Chipotle ever. <laughs> okay, so... This is really, really cool because again, just adding more features and functionality, bringing this level of, of detail and functionality to parity with um, you know, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, some of the other systems that are coming out and other competitive, competing EVs and other competing cars in general. So this is really good. Get to see the reviews, click on reviews, you see the reviews, pictures, you can favorite it, you can navigate to it, you can call it, you can check out the website. So again, all really good things, especially when trying to navigate to superchargers, but just for anything you wanna do, uh, being able to get that level of insight. But more specifically for us, we like to see reviews, we like to see when it's closed, whether, whether it's open or closed. That's really the, the key thing. So that's pretty cool. The next thing they have here are the phone call controls. This is a huge, huge update that may fly over a lot of people's heads um, just because um, for Model 3 and Model Y, this is something relatively new um, for them because everything that they do is on the touch screen. So when they answer a phone call, it's typically touching the touch screen to answer, mute, or hang up the phone call. 
But for S and X, especially from legacy S and X coming to the new S and X, this is something that was missing sort of a regression in terms of functionality uh, from the old legacy X to some of the new, the newer X's because we have the scroll wheels here that you see here, which are not the buttons that surround the, um, the scroll wheels on the legacy S and X, which allow you to hang up and open phone calls from the steering, from the steering wheel and in the interface here on the actual instrument panel. Okay, so this is really cool. Now it says control your phone calls from the steering wheel. Use the left scroll wheel to answer or decline incoming calls while you're on a call. Uh, use it to mute and unmute yourself. This is really, really game changing. Uh, again, bringing this to parity with the legacy model S and X. For us, it was a bit of a downgrade. And I mentioned that in all my videos about the lack of multifunction capabilities of these scroll wheels as compared to the previous model S and model X. There were widgets on this particular instrument, instrument panel that allows you to see more functionality, be able to control different things with the scroll wheel. They, you lose all of that jumping into the newer cars, whether it's the yoke or the wheel, it's going to be the same setup, but you lose a lot of that. So this is bringing a little bit of that back specifically one more important thing, which is answering and hanging up phone calls really was a pain to drive and then have to hit the touch screen. If you miss it, or if you don't press it hard enough, it's still not hanging up or it's still not answering and it becomes a whole ordeal, but you really have to take your eyes off the road to answer a phone call when driving in these new S and X's. And that's not really a good thing. Okay, so this is allowing us to be able to see it. And as you see here on the screen, here's a little quick little demo of it. This is what it looks like. Um, and then you can use a scroll wheel left and right to uh, hang up or mute. And it's pretty slick in that regard. So that's a really good job on Tesla to bring that functionality back for S and X owners who have been uh, legacy S and X owners upgrading to the new one or bring it newly for Model 3 and Model Y owners or new owners of Model S and X, the new versions, okay? So this is really, really cool functionality. I really appreciate that. Next thing is passenger seat control. This is another big one for, specifically for the S and X owners, if you have kids, small kids that can't move seats on their own. So this is great. Adjust the passenger seat from the rear touch screen to make it easier to enter or exit the rear seat, right? To access passenger seat controls, tap on the seat icon of the rear screen and hold the arrows left and right. So this is, again, a really good feature. Uh, you bring it up through the rear screen control. So if you're back there and you can reach the screen, you'll be able to do this on your own. If you're not back there and you're from the front, use the front screen, rear screen controls, if that's a bit of a mouthful. Going here, and now you see the seat icon here, and now you can use this to slide the seat forward and back. And that is really, really clutch for putting in baby seats. I know when the car seat is not in the car, people like to put the seat back so they can actually, you know, drive and enjoy and ride and enjoy it without being crammed up to the front. Uh, and then when the seat, uh, when the car seat needs to get in, you can simply come right here, slide it up and then slide your car seat right in. So this is really, really a great feature for Tesla to add, uh, taking into consideration the users and how they use the use cases that they have, especially if you're a single person mother, father, parent, whatever the case may be, and you have a kid that sits in the opposite seat. Typically, the seat right here is where you want to put them so you can look back and see them and monitor them. So you want to be able to move this seat forward and back and adjust it as needed, as your, as your kids need. So again, really, really good feature here. The other thing that we have here are voice recognition language. This is also a big thing. Again, here in the US, probably doesn't mean much to you, but maybe you're in the US and you speak a different language and English is not your first language. This could also be a good thing, right? So British English language is now available as a voice recognition language. And what that means is by default, English is going to be the language that the um, natural language processor that Tesla has when they use their voice commands, it uses. So if you're speaking perfect English, it's going to hear and recognize you correctly. If you speak English with an accent, British or other, it would have a hard time hearing and understanding what you're saying. So what this is saying is that now it's re it's starting to open up the tolerance for different accents, specifically the British English language accent uh, for the Model S and Model X and for all the different cars that we have here, threes and Ys, um, just so that the system now recognizes better your accent and be able to recognize the, the relevant voice command that you're trying to speak into the system. So this is pretty cool. So that's what we got in this particular version. Let's take a look at what other people have gotten in other cars and other builds. All right, so I wanna jump over to our good friends over at Not A Tesla App, which I totally butchered the first time I said it, but I'll put it in here. Not A Tesla App comes up right here. And we will go in here and check out the release notes for this build. And we will look at some of the features that um, we didn't get. So we talked about this, we talked about phone calls, 
text size is another one. Uh, this is for the three and Y. Obviously, everything being controlled by the single screen, it's important to have the right font size and text size to be able to see it, no matter what your conditions are, whether you wear glasses, contacts, or nothing. Um, but this is great because it allows you to be able to customize and, and control the text size to make it larger or smaller or whatever the case may be. Um, three and Y also get a feature that I'm really, really bummed out that Model S and X don't get. And I'm really confounded as to why they don't get it but they now get the ability to customize the left scroll wheel even further. So right now um, it's multifunction in terms of the phone calls, but it's not multifunction in terms of anything else. This allows you to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see, do more with the left scroll wheel, uh, scroll button on the steering wheel. You can now adjust things like brightness, acceleration mode, or performance actions like toggling the camera, app, opening the glove box, and saving dash cam footage. Long press the left scroll wheel to bring up a list of functions in the scroll and scroll through the list to choose which function comes by default. Go to controls, display and, and, and scroll wheel function. This is really cool for Model 3 and Model Y, giving you more functionality or multi functionality in that left scroll wheel. Not this one, but the other one left scroll wheel to be able to have some um, quick actions that you can press long press on that particular button. Open the glove box, long press, change your performance mode, long press. Uh, and gets, you know, open up the camera to see your back of camera. Really, really cool features. Very happy for Model 3 and Model Y owners to get that additional functionality. But again, this is kind of functionality that already existed in legacy Model S and X. They've taken it away for the new Model S and X, and now they've not included it back in the Model S and X to be able to customize that left scroll wheel, have more functionality. Would love to long press and pull up the camera. Would love to long press and switch uh, uh, just, uh, acceleration modes, performance modes, and go from plaid to standard, standard to plaid. Um, would love to long press and hit the glove box to come open. So it's an easier step for us because I feel like whatever the Model 3 and Model Y are doing in terms of their, their workflow is going to be very similar, if not identical to the Model S and X. And the same, uh, uh, same shortcuts that can be extended to them should also be extended to Model 3, to Model S and Model X. The same thing with the rear backup camera that you can't turn on, excuse me, not the rear backup camera, the um, turn signal camera, the blind spot camera that you cannot move in the Model S and X is still down here. Whereas the Model 3 and Model Y, you can put it up here and make it easier to see. And again, that would be just even better for Model S and X as well. So now Model S and X, you still have to look out the mirror. You still have to look down here for the window, right? You have to look down here. You can't move this window up here and up there like you can with the Model 3 and Model Y. Not understanding why they don't do that in all the cars just to make it consistent and make it easy to build, right? So all the feature, all the cars have the same feature. All the cars have the same functionality. Not some cars have it, some cars don't, okay? All right, they have control, control search, and they also get gear chimes, which is pretty cool. Uh, so right now, when you before, prior to this update, when you change the gears of Model 3 or Model Y, just the sound of the mechanicals kicking in is what you would understand as the, the indicator that you're changing gears. You really wouldn't know. Uh, this now puts a little bit of a gear chime, probably not dissimilar to the gear chime on the Model S and Model X, the new refresh ones, when you put it in gear and it, go, and it makes that little sound where it goes up and down. So if I go here, that... See that reverse there. Okay. So ch lots of chimes here. So when you go there, you get those chimes, the model three and model Y chimes are a little bit different, but they are indicators that you're changing gears, which is great uh, for those who are not paying attention for those who need accessibility options to be able to understand what gears you're in uh, all good things there. All right. Passenger seat controls. Now passenger seat controls are just for uh, S and X. I mentioned that already. If I didn't just to correct myself, Points of interest are for everybody. Voice recognition are for everybody. Um, and then some other things that are uh, outside of the U.S. Speed assist here is there. Zoom meetings for people not in the U.S. who hadn't gotten it already. Um, handwriting is there um, for legacy model S and X users not in the U.S. And then rename the vehicle app. This is sort of the undocumented change. Being able to rename your, your vehicle in the app. Um, in here. So if you have an app and you want to rename your car from the app, you can do that now here as opposed to having to rename it in the car. All right. Improvements to emergency braking. This is available worldwide. Undocumented change. Automatic emergency braking can now stop for vehicles traveling in perpendicular path to the vehicle, such as running a red light or at an intersection, which is great. So typically emergency braking is for cars that are in front of you, impeding your path in such a way that it might potentially cause an impact. This now takes into consideration the cameras and shows you cars coming left and right that may be intersecting your path and potentially put on emergency braking that way. So this is a really cool feature as well. 
Okay. Parked visualizations, three and Y. Visualization has changed now and you get the ability to open and close the front in terms of the labels that are there. Um, it just put the, put the labels there as well. So that's just a, a little bit of an accessibility situation, just making it easier for you to know that you can open and close the front and trunk and lock the car right from the, the parked visualization. Okay. Uh, speedometer font uh, for, for all the cars has been bolded a little more. Uh, just for those that don't know, the speedometer font that you see right here is actually uh, was actually significantly more bold prior to, I think, version 10, uh, version 10 coming out. And then they made it super thin. Uh, used to be really, really bold right in your face. Just very clear that you know what speed you're going. Really wish they would bring that back. But I think they're trending towards that direction by making it a little bit bolder now. All right. Um, nav improvements. I talked about this one. This is about being able to show points of interest and show the distance from you that they are, which is a really good thing. Um, prior to this, it wasn't as prominent. Um, they would show the distance, but it wasn't as prominent. So now it's just making it really prominent, making sure that you can, you know, that you can press that button and bring up that location. Uh, what happened before is that this was all one bar and you would press it and it would automatically navigate to this. So this is great because it allows you to put the pin there, see the location, see if it's open or closed without actually navigating to it. And if you want to navigate to it, you could press the actual name or you could press the navigate to on the, uh, on the navigation. So this is again, really good feature, making the, 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 the UI a little bit better. Okay. Um, another undocumented change is favorite song, uh, in the navigation here in the, in the navigation for the, uh, music, um, you now have the ability to, um, press plus as opposed to the heart. They replaced the heart icon for favorites now with this plus, and that's going to be your new favorite icon. All right. And adjust wiper speed. Um, they can, this is, uh, now being able to adjust the wiper speed using the scroll wheel on the, on the steering wheel. I kind of feel like that was always the case for the new S and X. You could always use the scroll wheel to adjust the speed, um, and mode of the wipers. I think this is just now bringing it to the three and Y. Uh, but I think it was always the case for the S and X, if I recall correctly. Here's another one uh, for suspension. Now you have more control over your air suspension in the suspension menu. You now have toggles for enabling and disabling vehicle height at specific locations. This is pretty cool um, for the new S and X because it didn't have that. Old S and X had that. Maybe the UI is not the same, but it had the ability to persist a certain set uh, uh, height until a certain speed um, or you know, defaulted always to low, things like that. The new one doesn't have that for some reason. Uh, let me just take a look really quickly. Um, the new one doesn't have that option here. Um, and even still doesn't have it on this one. So if I go to medium, it just goes to medium. I can't set it until 35 miles an hour or whatever the case may be. Now, if I put it in drive, I'm not sure if that makes a difference. Still doesn't do it. I'm not sure what the, what the situation is. Um, but for this one, you don't, you're not able to persist and that UI doesn't apply to us. So maybe that's the legacy S and X there. I'm not sure. All right. The last one I think for this release is the new icons. They changed it from just showing the logo to more tiles and app based, um, app store looking feel to the, uh, to the theater app. Um, so this is for all the cars, which is pretty cool. Just a, a visual, a visual change. Uh, and then also not, not quite the last one, but also app drawer. Your app drawer now shows all the possible options, not just the ones that you have active. So that's good. It's, it's why it's bigger for everyone involved. So you can customize here. If you want to customize it, that's a, a dedicated button that you have here now. Um, but all the icon available icons are available here, not just the active ones. So that's pretty cool. And then you have new labels. I talked about that. The new feature, the new button will appear on features that are there. And the charging screen. Ah, I forgot about this one. Charging screen. This is the last one. Charging screen has been adjusted to make it easier to toggle. This is what I don't like in this one. So I go to charging and now you lose the cool visual of the car in favor of um, a more technical charging screen to show you the details, allow you to be able to manipulate, um, you know, where the slider goes. 90%, 80%, 89%, 87%, small granular details. This makes it easier for you. It's not quite snapping at 90 and 100 and the different intervals that I like, but it just allows you more granular detail coming here um, and also open the charge port. I think they could still could have snuck the graphic in back there somewhere just to show it. I thought that was pretty cool. But, um, you know, this this is the new charging screen for you now just to make it a little bit easier for those looking for that level of granularity.
All right. So that's pretty much it with this particular build. Let me know if you got something that we didn't get. Let me know if you got some features that I, that we didn't notice or that not a Tesla app didn't notice uh, and leave them in the comments below. OK, if you have any questions about this release, uh, let me know. And let's talk about it in the comments until the next time. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.